check this out. We've got something really fun today. This is so amazing. Math and math. Oh man, again? Let's review. Since grade 10, we've been working with finding angles using these trigonometric ratios. And so we typically write theta is equal to, and we would do sine inverse, and then we would put the ratio in here, root 3 over 2. Now in other places, they can use arc sine, which is a bit nicer, but here we're stuck using this notation. Now this is actually one of our special ratios that we know, so in quadrant 1 at least, this would be 60 degrees. 1.4 inverse of a function. The inverse of a function is found by switching the x and y variables. The inverse is able to undo or reverse the effects of the original function. More on that at the end. But first, let's look at a simple function here, y equals 3x squared. To find the inverse, we just need to switch x and y, and there it is. Now, you might want to solve for y, and in this case, we'd have, let's see, y squared is equal to x divided by 3, and then we'd have y equals, taking the square root of both sides, plus or minus root x over 3. Now, warning, the inverse may or may not be a function. So we have to be aware of that. In this case, this is not a function because if we put in a value for x, we're going to get two values for y. Or if we graph this, it would fail the vertical line test. Let's try an example where we don't have the equation. We only have the graph here of f of x. Now to find the inverse, we're gonna take every point here and switch the x and the y value. So this point, negative three, zero, becomes zero, negative three. This one becomes 3, 0. This one doesn't change, so it would be invariant. And this one, 2, 6. Now let's graph this and see what it looks like. So 0, negative 3, 3, 0, 2, 2, and 2, 6. So looks like this once we connect all the points. Now, what is the equation of the line of symmetry? So you can see there should be a line that it's being reflected in. And we want the equation of that line, and it's y equals x. How about the invariant points? Well, we mentioned those already. There's just one of them, and again, it's on the line of reflection because that's uh, the only transformation we did, is just the inverse. So the invariant point here is 2, 2. The domain arrange before and after. So let's say that we'll do before, and we'll do it in black here. So before, to match the black graph here, and we'll say domain and let's do it in interval notation. So it goes from negative 3 to 6, including negative 3 and including 6. And the range before, it goes from 0 and the maximum is 3. Now let's switch to blue and we'll do the domain and range. So let's say after or the inverse here and let's do the domain and now it goes from 0 to 3 and the range here goes from negative 3 to a maximum of 6 and hopefully you notice that these actually switched and that makes sense. If we switch all the x and y values, then we're going to switch the domain and range. So when we take the inverse, the domain and range switch.
Let's go down one more thing here, mapping notation. So every point x, y becomes y, x. Switch the variables in the equation to find the inverse of y equals x squared. So the inverse would be x equals y squared. Now most people want to solve for y. I don't know why, but I'm sure he's a nice guy. And we get y equals plus or minus root x. Let's give this a sketch. So square root of one is one, square root of four is two, and plus and minus would put it down here as well. And so we'd have a sideways parabola. Okay, and this is uh, x equals y squared, or you can say y equals plus or minus root x, doesn't matter. What is the equation of the line of symmetry? It would be the same as before, y equals x. And let's just draw that as a dotted line here. Okay. So this thing didn't get, although it might look like it, it didn't get rotated. So this point didn't get rotated 90 degrees to here. Um, this point is invariant. And this point, say this point, um, negative 2, 4. That got reflected all the way down to here for negative 2. Okay, invariant points, well, those would be on the line of reflection. So they'd be at the origin and at 1, 1. And that's because, I mean, hey, if we switch 0 and 0, well, it's going to look the same. Domain and range before and after. So let's say before we'll do in uh, red here. Four. Okay, so domain was all real numbers, so round brackets because we cannot include infinity. Can't actually ever have that. Range would be greater than or equal to zero. And there we go. Now after, go back to blue here for inverse. Inverse. And our domain is now, this one, greater than or equal to zero. And our range is, you can see that it's going up forever, going down forever. So our range is now all real numbers. And is the inverse a function? No. It fails the vertical line test or a value of x returns more than one value of y. We had the vertical line test before to determine if a relation was a function. Now we have the horizontal line test. Take a guess what that might be. So that's if you draw a horizontal line through the function and it touches the line more than once, then the inverse is not going to be a function. So if I drew a horizontal line through this function here, I see that it hits in multiple places. So that means that the inverse is not going to be a function. Now, if you just look at this horizontal line, if we took the inverse of this horizontal line, it would reflect in the line y equals x, and it would become a vertical line. So essentially, a horizontal line test on the original is like a vertical line test on the inverse. But we can uh, do it without actually finding the inverse. Now, how can we restrict the domain so of the original function so that the inverse is a function as well? So let's uh, come up with a few answers. Answer number one, we could say that x just needs to be greater than zero. And that would just take into account this part here that and so that the inverse would just be like that and the inverse passes the vertical line test and and this little portion of the original passes the horizontal line test okay option number two we could have went the other way taken the left side of this graph so x is less than zero and then we would have been taking just this part of the original and the inverse would look something like that. And so inverse passes the vertical line test and the original passes the horizontal line test. 
that's not the only things we could do. We could also say, how about x is greater than 1? That wouldn't cut it at the vertex. It would just cut it off here and take the graph portion to the right of x equals uh, x is greater than 1. So on this side here. And so that would be uh, like that. And then the inverse uh, would actually be coming off of that point right there. Okay, then, and then you see that there are a ton. We could have done uh, x is greater than or equal to zero. We could do uh, x is less than or equal to negative four, and so on. If the inverse is a function, then we can use function notation for the inverse. And we show inverse by putting a negative one in the exponent position. Where have you seen a negative one in the exponent position before? Well, at the very beginning, we looked at trigonometry, and that was actually inverse as well. So we had, uh, say, tan inverse okay, of something there. But you may have also seen it with reciprocals and just having it as an exponent. So how about uh, 5 times 10 to the negative 1? And this would be 5 times and 10 to the negative 1 means 1 over 10. And uh, 5 times 1 over 10 is 1 half. So this means reciprocal, and this means inverse. And you're going to have to determine what it means based on the context. Find and graph the inverse. Find the mapping notation for this inverse as well. So first, let's find the equation of the inverse here. We would do that by switching x and y. So our inverse is x equals 4y minus 2. And let's rewrite this and solve it for y so that it will be easier to graph. So let's put plus 2 on both sides and switch the 4y onto this side because that's what we that's where we normally have it. So 4y equals, and now putting this on this side and then switching it, x plus 2. And we divide by 4 on both sides, so y equals 1 quarter x plus 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. So there's a nice equation in slope y-intercept form. Let's graph it. Looks like we've got a y-intercept of 1 half and a slope of 1 quarter, which means we go up 1 and over 4. So up 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4. And now we can try to draw a line through that. I'll just put more points on here so then I can go. Draw it through those points. Okay, so that is the inverse. We can also use function notation because this is a function. So we could say f inverse is equal to this. And in order to use the function notation here, we need to have solved it for y. Let's find the mapping notation. Every point x, y becomes y, x. And maybe that would have been easier to graph it. Say we want this point here, 1, 2, becomes 2, 1. Uh, this point here, 0, negative 2, becomes negative 2, 0. So we could have done it that way as well. Will the inverse of this function be a function? So if we look at the horizontal line test and draw a horizontal line randomly anywhere here, anywhere except the vertex, we're going to hit this function twice. So no, it fails the horizontal line test. Now, since it failed the horizontal line test, part B here is restrict the domain of the original so that the inverse is a function. So we could do that in a number of ways. Let's do our domain in set builder notation. That would be with these set brackets. We'll declare our domain variable x is such that. And then we'll give our restriction. We just need to cut it off uh, either you know, on the left or the right of the vertex would be the simplest. So I'll say x is greater than or equal to zero, and all real numbers would be fine.
Uh, we could have also done uh, x is such that x is less than or equal to 0, or x is less than or equal to negative 1, less than or equal to negative 2, less than or equal to negative 2.67 would all work. I know we want to draw the inverse, so that's reflected in the line y equals x here. And so this isn't going anywhere, so it's the infinitely many invariant points here. And then this would be heading down this way instead. So you can see it's definitely not a function. Now we can see if we tried the vertical line test on this, it wouldn't work. And let's label this graph as x equals the absolute value of y. At the very beginning of the lesson, we talked about how the inverse would undo or reverse the effects of any function. So using this f of x from a couple of slides ago, let's find the inverse again. So that would be when we switch x and y. And let's solve for y here again. That would be, uh, and put it in function notation here, uh, f inverse is equal to 1 quarter x plus 1 half. Now let's do a composite function. It means we're going to put this function inside of uh, the inverse function. So wherever we see an x here, we're going to replace it with 4x minus 2, this, this whole function here. Okay, so we're sticking the whole function inside of the inverse. And so that would be 4x minus 2 in there and Right here, a one quarter, four x minus two, plus one half. Now let's just uh, simplify this here. So when we when we multiply in the quarter here, then we get x, and this one you get minus one half, and plus one half. So minus one half plus one one half cancels out, and we're just left with x. And so that's what I mean when the function's inverse undoes or reverses any effect of x. So they essentially cancel out and you're just left with x. And now we can see why this was working with trig functions. Normally we wouldn't write it, but if you were trying to solve a trig function like the one we had at the beginning, really you do sine inverse on both sides. And the sine inverse and the sine cancel, and all you're left with is theta. And on this side, you get your answer. This was part of Relations and Functions 5 and 6, demonstrating an understanding of inverses, and also demonstrating an understanding of the effects of reflecting in the line y equals x which is the same as inverse. Sometimes they'll mention inverse in questions. Sometimes they'll mention y equals x, and you need to know they're both talking about the same thing. Here's some questions from the textbook. Give them a try. See if you know what you're doing.